Hi, Luke here with the Smokeless Range, and today we're going to show you how to film a scenario for the VST Pro. So right off the bat, the first thing we're going to do is a safety check. You know, you never know which one of your actors might be have, might have their concealed gun on them, or you may have it on there and not even think about it. So the very first thing we're going to do is ask everybody, does anybody have a real weapon on them, knife or pistol? No. Nope. Nope. Okay, I don't have mine on me either. If you do have them, or anybody does, stop what you're doing right now. Lock them up in the house, lock them up in the car, just anything like that. You don't want anybody accidentally grabbing the wrong gun during the scene. Second thing, ask everybody to silence their phones. Nobody likes it in the middle of a scene or even in a movie when your phone starts ringing right in the middle of a scene. So you ask everybody, you've got a phone, go ahead and silence it. All right, today we're going to be talking about the most basic way to film a scene. We're going to use a cell phone. So I'm going to use my iPhone 7 Plus. Uh, everything I'm going to do today does not require having an editing software on your computer. This is just I'm going to shoot with my, my phone. I'm going to dump those video clips over to my computer and then I'm going to import those video clips into the VST Pro editor. So I'm going to take my phone and the very first thing I'm going to do, and I'm going to do a cutaway to this so you can see this, is I'm going to set my settings to 1280 by 720. So to do that, I click on settings, and then I go to the camera. And uh, you know, if you have an Android, you just have to look up how to do these things. Uh, now the native resolution that the software requires, the VST Pro requires, is 1280 by 720. You can film in 1080, but you're going to have to downsize in a software if you do that. So if you don't want to have to mess with the software in your computer. Go ahead into your phone and set it to 720p. That way you don't have to touch your computer or have an editing suite. So I'm going to set it to 720p. If your phone will do 60p or 60 frames per second at 720p, do that because it'll give you a better image, uh, more hyper realistic with more frames. But if it'll only do 30 frames per second like the iPhone at 720p, that's okay too. That's going to look fine. Uh, the other thing to do is to back up and go to formats in the iPhone anyways and switch that to most compatible because uh, iPhone has a high efficiency mode and uh, most compatible is going to make it easier to work with once you put it on the computer. Okay now we're going to talk about the equipment we're going to use for this scene. So all I'm going to use is my iPhone in a little holder and a tripod. Now this can be any tripod as long as it's stable and uh, they've got any of these little things that you can do uh, here that you can do uh, to hold your little clamps to hold your phone. So this one you can get them off of Amazon for like 10 bucks. Uh, this one's aluminum and it's a little bit more expensive uh, but those will work just fine as well. And what that's going to do is allow me to mount my phone to the tripod just like a normal camera would do. Okay now we're going to talk about framing the scene. So framing the scene it, we're talking about how tall the person is going to be in the screen knowing that this is going to be projected onto your big screen. So just remember, keep that in mind, how big your image is on your projection screen when you're framing this. Do you want a full-size person? Do you want it head to uh, toe to head? Or do you want just a mid shot? They're going to end up being pretty big on the screen. Just keep those th things in mind when you're going through and framing the scene and figuring out how the whole layout is going to go. So let's go ahead and dive into filming the scene. Okay, so now we're going to talk about the overview of the scene, what we're going to do in this scene, and then once I'm done with that, I'm going to talk with my actor and we're going to go over what his role is in this scene. So today's scene is pretty straightforward. It's going to be walking out of the house, you're approaching your car when a stranger walks out from behind your car and starts engaging with you. Then it's going to unfold from there. and We're going to film several different outcomes so that we have a lot of different training outcomes to work with. Okay, so now that we know what our basic gist of our scene is, I'm going to go ahead and go through the steps with my actor, and we're going to kind of pace out the scene, and then we're going to get into filming the very first thing, uh, first scene. Now, the first opening is called the main scene. You're always going to film and have a main scene. Then that leads into the multiple outcomes or branches. So first thing we're going to do is go through the main scene. All right, Brian, so what we're going to do is you're going to be behind the Suburban here, you're going to walk up and find you a spot that you're going to stop at, uh, probably somewhere around in here. And just remember where that marker is, you know, where you are kind of got your little spot there, so that when I reset you, that you come back to the, roughly the same spot. Okay. OK, 
Okay, so we're gonna go up here and I'm gonna grab the iPhone and I'm gonna start the scene. And uh, Brian, you're gonna just get back behind the Suburban and I'm gonna yell action and you just kind of watch for me. And when I get to about this point on the sidewalk is when you step out and say whatever you're gonna say to me to address me. And then I'm gonna hold that camera and it's important when you're doing this to not just cut the moment that they're done saying what they're saying. Hold for about a three second count so you have that extra footage right after it. That just makes it a lot easier when you're putting this together. And it also gives a few beats for the training person standing in front of the screen afterwards doing the training to make a decision and do something. So, so let's go this. Go ahead and uh, set up in your position there. I'm gonna grab the phone off the tripod. And I'm going to set the tripod over somewhere where it's not going to get in the frame. I'm just going to set that over there. All right, I got my video rolling. And all right, Brian, you ready? Yes, sir. All right, here we go. So always just make sure that you're rolling. So I'm going to go ahead and start the video recording. That's okay. I can trim this part off. But I just want to make sure I'll miss the video. So very first thing I'm going to do is I can't. I don't want to make any noises or talk while I'm doing this, and I don't want anybody else to say anything except for the actor. So here I'm going to start. All right. Well, I covered the lens, so just make sure you don't do that. So we're going to roll again. Hey buddy, how are you? I see you, I see you looking at my wife. All right, cut. All right, so that's, we're gonna call that the main. So he's come out and I've gotten to a point and uh, now what I'm gonna do is, I could sit here and hold this camera if I wanted to. If I had a separate camera person, they could sit here and hold this frame as steady as they could throughout the whole process or you can jump on a tripod. on video, so I'm going to drop this on the tripod. All right, so got a little bit of the back of the car. Looks like I need to back up just a little bit. Yeah, now I got a little bit of the back of the car, a little bit of the word suburban in the car. Don't be afraid to go back and recheck that again, just to make sure you got as close as possible. So let's see here. Actually, I can just go ahead and I can jump through this video to the end and look at that last frame of him. So the more time you take on doing this, the better the results are going to be. You know, this is this is not a really quick process if you really want to nail it. Uh, let's see here. There we go. So I come out and I stop about right there. Okay. So I can see the whole word suburban and right into that top tree trunk part there in the side of the car. So now let me jump back into the camera. So let's see here. I need to back up just a little bit. I didn't get quite that far down there. There we go. That's pretty close. Okay, so, all right. Now I'm gonna jump back to the camera. I think that's pretty close. That's gonna work just fine. And you're gonna get a little jump here and that's okay. People tend to look right over that. All right, so now I've got the framing. My actor is in his position where he addressed me. So now my first branch that I'm gonna do, my scene one branch is going to be, it's always good to write them down as well. So I've written down all the branches that I wanna do and uh, the first thing is that he, for, that he steps out. So we've already got that in our main. The second thing is he's just gonna walk away. So he's standing there looking at me and if the trainee has said something or 
had a nice aggressive posture that said, you know, uh, I don't, I don't need anything from you. Please go away. You know, anything like that. And they, they decide, you know, I don't want to get into this and they walk off. That's a perfectly legit outcome. So we're going to go ahead and film that first. That's going to be our first branch. Then we're going to reset and do our other branches. So here we go for first branch. All right. So you've already come up. You've said something to me. Did you have your hands in your pocket when you were talking to me? Do you remember? You had one out? Okay. So good. That way we don't have too much of a big jump. Uh, all right. So in this one, you're just going to sit there for a second and say action. Count to about three in your head. And then say, all right, man. Yeah, no problem. And just walk off behind the Suburban. And then I'm going to say cut. And then we can reset. All right. So we're rolling, recording, and action. All right. No problem. and cut so i gave it a few seconds after he walked off so i had that little bit of extra footage it's always nice to have a little bit of cushion in there all right so our next scene is uh that he's going to get aggressive so either you've said something to him that makes him upset or you've said nothing and he feels like he can get a little more aggressive with you whatever it is you know depends on your scene but in this scene that's what's going to happen uh now he's going to get a little more mouthy with me and he's going to pull a knife and make a threat to me. And he's gonna threat uh, my life with the, with the knife. So, do you know what you're gonna do? Do you know what you're gonna say? So now you've already told me, hey, I've seen you with my wife. This guy may not even know you. You know, this might be some random guy that's crazy and he thinks that you've been sleeping with his wife. Whatever the, whatever the gist of your scene is. So, uh, you know what you're gonna say, what you're gonna do. So this particular branch, all you're gonna do is threaten me with it. You're not gonna come towards me, you're just gonna pull the knife out and you're gonna say something like, Dude, I'm going to stab you, or I'm going to kill you, whatever. Whatever you want to say. All right, so we're rolling, and action. I'm going to cut you right now. Cut? Good. So now I've got a threat. He's pulled a knife out. So now that's my next branch is going to be that he uh, drops the knife and runs. So like you pull your gun and threaten him, that's the response to this. So I'm giving myself several different outcomes so that there's a lot of different levels that can be responded, uh, and that can respond to how your trainee is doing in front of the screen. All right, so this next one is, you've got the knife out, you're threatening me with it, and I'm gonna say action, remember to wait about three seconds, and then you're gonna respond like I pulled a gun and I'm threatened to shoot you. You're just gonna drop the knife and say, say forget this and run off, or something like that. Or whatever, man, you know, just whatever you wanna say. All right, you ready? We're rolling, and action. Dude, I don't want any part of that. And cut. Again, a little bit of buffer before and a little bit of buffer at the end. Uh, about three seconds is fine. All right, so now our next scene is going to be... He's going to attack us with the knife. So, again, either I've done nothing or I've agitated him. Whatever it is, the guy gets aggravated. Now he's already threatened us with the knife. Now he's going to attack us with the knife. Okay, so... Now you've got, you've already threatened with a knife. And now all you're going to do is you're going to say, you're going to start kind of coming at me like, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to kill you. And then just kind of run up and then go past the camera. You know that, and that signifies I didn't do anything and you attacked me with a knife. I got attacked with a knife. That's what happened. Here. Okay. All right. You ready? All right. I'm rolling and action. I'm going to kill you. I'm going to kill you. All right, cut. Now I stop the recording. All right, so we got attacked with a knife. All right, now we need to have some responses like you've shot the person. So you need to film that same thing at each stage. So now we're going to back up, and you don't have your knife now. You've only walked up, but someone may choose to respond. You know, they just get overexcited or whatnot. Uh, for whatever reason, the guy walks up. He asks you the question or says something to you. And now I need a death scene, like if someone pulls and shoots. That way you get that response if they do do that. These are all just options. They're all just uh, different branches that we're, you're going to offer as part of the training scene. All right, so for this one, you've already said, I've seen you looking at my wife. I'm going to say action, and then I'm going to point at you, and that's when you're going to act like you've been shot. So just crumple over onto the ground. And But once you do, lay there for a few seconds, like a three count, I'm going to say cut, and then we'll, we'll reset. Okay, you ready?
you always want to make sure they settle in on the ground just to give you that you know that extra time that extra feeling that it's real that he fell on the ground you don't want to just cut turn the film off right away so always make sure you let your actors know and let anybody that's standing around not to giggle or do anything like that until you say cut all right so now we've got a death scene in case someone shoots early for whatever reason um, the next one is going to be they pulled the knife out they've he's threatened us and now I'm going to have a death scene. So he's pulled the knife out. He's already made the, th the threat with the knife. And now we're going to have him die in that scene. So go ahead and pull the knife out. And again, we're going to roll. And then I'm going to point at you. And then you're going to act like you've been shot. Now, we're going to do something a little more advanced in this just to show you the capabilities if you wanted to do it. So we're going to film it one time where he gets shot one time and he falls all the way over. But then I'm going to film it again where he gets shot, stumbles back, and then comes at me again. So that way you can have, you know, just not one shot takes care of business uh, that you shoot until the threat's eliminated. Uh, again, this is all up to you as the person making this training scene, but this is how we're going to film it. All right, so for this branch, you've made the threat, and now I'm going to point at you, you're going to get shot, you're just going to fall over dead, just like you did a second ago. Then, uh, then we'll get to the next part. So. All right, we're rolling, and action. Cut. All right. Okay, for this scene, we're or this branch, I should say, we're going to have him come at us with the knife, but we're going to have two shots required. And to do that, I have to film the first scene all the way through like nothing happened, or like they didn't get shot twice. So, Brian, what we're gonna do is, you've made the threat, uh, you're standing there, when I see action, you're gonna start coming at me, and I'm gonna point at you a few steps into it, your approach, and you're going to act like you've been shot, then come back up and come at me all the way through, just like I didn't shoot you the second time, and you got all the way to me with the knife, okay? So, you ready? All right, we're rolling, and action. And cut. So he got shot one time. That wasn't enough. He still came at you. You didn't shoot the second time. So he made it all the way to you. So now what we're going to do is you're going to reset back up about where I shot you. So come forward. And you're going to act like you've been, you're bellied over. And then you're going to come, start to come at me. So when I say action, give it a few seconds and then pop, you know, come back up at me. But I'm going to point at that point, I'm going to point at you again like you got shot that second time and this time you're gonna go all the way down okay we're rolling get ready kind of belly over a little bit more like you got shot and action and cut okay got it so now I've got two clips that I can use to require that secondary shot if, if need be and uh, you know, just to get that little extra training in there. Okay, now we've gone through all of our scenes and all of our branches, I should say, and we're ready to wrap up and I need to get all of this footage off of the phone and onto my computer. And so we're going to go inside into uh, the desk and we're going to move all the foot. First, we're going to use the phone itself to trim the footage. So that's the nice thing about, like I said, you can do this all on the phone and never have to touch a video editing software like Adobe Premiere or Sony Vegas if you don't want to mess with all that stuff and you just want to film a scene like we just did in its most basic form. Uh, then you can do that all on your phone. And uh, I'm going to show you how to go in there and trim these clips down so that they're ready and then how to move those over to your computer. And then at that point, we can jump over to the next video that talks about how to actually import these ready-made scenes into our VST Pro editor and make a scene out of it.
All right, now we're gonna go into our photos on our camera roll on our phone. And I've put these all in an album just to make it easier to find them for this purposes of this video. But yours should be right there in your camera roll if you've just recorded them. So my first scene is gonna be called my main scene. It's the one that leads into whatever kind of action and some sort of decision point. So that first scene here, let's bring it up, and we're just going to click edit in the top right hand corner, and this opens this new interface up, and now in edit, I have these two in and out points on the left, that's these the left and right arrow there. If I move that out of the way and then grab that left slider, I can move it back and forth and mark my endpoint, which I believe was about right here is where I wanted to start, is me leaving the house. Then I'm going to play through, and then I'm gonna stop once he's done talking. Hey buddy, how are you? I see you, I see you looking at my wife. All right, right there. And now, so I'm gonna bring this scrub back over here, this out point. About right there. So now I'm going to hit play. Hey buddy. How are you? I see you. I see you looking at my wife. Okay, that's exactly what I need. So now I'm going to click done. And I'm going to save as a new clip. That way my original is still there just in case I need it. So now I'm going to go on to my next clip here. Rolling, recording, and action. All right, no problem. So this is our comply scene. So again, I'm gonna click edit. And I'm going to scrub over here. And action. Okay, I need to move over just a little bit more to get rid of the word action. Action. All right, no problem. All right, so he walks away. I'm gonna let him walk off for a second. And cut. So I and then I'm gonna trim it back to before I say cut. So we'll watch the whole thing again. All right, no problem. And that's it. I click done again. Again, I'm gonna save as a new clip. Now we'll do our next scene. Thing and action. I'm gonna cut you right now. Cut. Good. All right, so this is our threat scene. Again, edit. Thing and action. So right after I say action and before he reaches behind him is where I want to get to. I'm going to cut you right now. Cut. Okay, and then just before I say cut. I'm going to cut you right now. Okay, that's good. We'll click done. Save his new clip. All right, our next one. Pulling and action. Dude, I don't want any part of that. And cut. All right, and this is our, like you've pulled a gun and threatened him and he drops the knife and runs scene. So we'll call it threat run later when we're naming him. Just edit again.
Dude, I don't want any part of that. Yeah, so that's about right where we want to start. So I grab the endpoint. About right there. Make sure I don't hear the word action. Dude, I don't want any part of that. Yep, that's a good spot. And cut. Okay. Again, I want to miss me saying cut. Dude, I don't want any part of that. And that's good. Done. Save his new clip. All right, I'm rolling and action. I'm gonna kill you. I'm gonna kill you. All right, this is our attack scene. I'm gonna kill you. I'm gonna kill you. All right, that's far enough there. Trim back to there. I like to leave it in the frame there so you just know that he reached you before doing anything. That's where I'm going to trim this clip till. So let's watch the whole thing. And I think I heard action just a little bit there. So trim a little more. I'm going to kill you. I'm going to kill you. Lead it through just a little bit more at the end there. There we go. Okay, that's you, you really can do whatever you'd like to on these clips. This is just how I'm going to do this one for the video. Save as new clip. Okay, this is our death just when the guy walks up to us just in case someone decides to shoot at that point there's a response so we'll edit again now for a death you want to start right when there's some sort of movement like he's getting see how he starts to hunch over so about right there that way there's an immediate response from the shot and then Wait till he's all the way on the ground. About right there. Okay, done. Save his new clip. And action. Okay, here's our. He's threatened us with a knife, and here is. A death scene for that one. Edit. Again, I want to get right up where there's response. About right there. Okay, back this up. Right there. Done. Save his new clip. And action. Okay, now this is our clip where he gets shot once but continues at us. So, again, edit. We're just going to start about right there. This is after he's threatened. All right, he made it all the way to us. I click done, save. And get ready, kind of belly over a little bit more like you got shot and action. Okay, so this is our, if somebody shoots again after he's been shot, this will actually take him down as a full death scene. So click edit again. So we want that second 
response to being shot. So about right there. Until he stops moving, done, save his new clip. All right, now we have all of our scenes trimmed and they're saved in our camera roll. And now we'll move on to transferring those over to the PC. Okay, now I'm just gonna plug my normal lightning connector charge cable for my iPhone into the USB port of my computer. And then I'm gonna plug it into my phone. And then my phone should pop up a message asking if I wanna trust this computer. And I wanna say trust. So now that my phone is connected to the computer and I've trusted the computer, I can just click on the Windows Explorer or File Explorer, I should say. And then I'm going to click on my computer or this PC. And then there's my iPhone and then the internal storage, DCIM. And then they're usually going to be in the highest number folder. So what I've done is organize these so that uh, they're the, the latest ones that have been modified are on top. So I just went to view, details, now depending on how many videos you have on your phone or how many pictures, uh, you can change that organization to figure out how you want to you know, sort the list differently to find them the easiest. Uh, but I just clicked on modified so that I saw everything that I just worked on because I sh actually filmed them several months ago. And then I switched back over to extra large icons so I can actually see them. And here's my clips. So I'm just going to hit, I'm going to hold control on my keyboard as I click each one of these. Let me scroll down. And then grab all of them. my main scene. I believe this is one too. I'm not sure why it's not showing a little video, video preview clip. Uh, and then I'm going to copy these. And I created a new scene folder right on my desktop just for simplicity for the video. I'm going to click in here and I'm going to paste them all in there. Now I've got all my scenes in here. There's my main scene clip. Okay, from here, what I'm going to do to make this easier is to rename these clips so that when I go into the VST Pro Editor, they're easily identifiable. So this one I know is my main. So I'm just going to click on it. I'm going to call it main. Then let's check this one out. So this is my threat death. So I'm just going to click on it. Threat death. Now you can name these whatever you want. I'm just keeping it simple so it's easy to find and easy to understand. Uh, you're the only one who's going to see these names. The, this won't show up on the software in any way uh, during training. So there's our threat comply. There's our threat. That's our first shot, but continues to attack. So we'll just call this first shot. Okay, there's our comply. There's our attack. OK, 
Okay, there's our attack death. There's our non threat death. Okay, from here we will jump over to the next video, which is the how to add a new scene to the VST Pro, and in there it talks about converting all of these clips that we've just edited into our Theora codec, and then bringing them in and adding them into a new scene and creating the new scene. Uh, now that video does not use these same clips, they use different clips from a different video or from a different uh, scene that was filmed, but the same basic principles will apply either way. All right, thank you very much, and if you have any questions, feel free to email us at srsupport at laser-ammo.com. Thank you.